What's going on guys? Welcome back to the TCG Empire YouTube channel. Today we do have What to Buy Wednesday. And if you're new to the channel, What to Buy Wednesday is where I go over cards from the deck of the week and talk about if they're a good price to buy or if they're not a good price to buy. Now this week we do have Lost Box and this ranges from anything from playing Sableye Charizard to the variants that play Mirage Gate with Dragonite as well as Raikou all the way to the other fun decks that can play things like the build that we played last week with Zapdos V. So overall, we're going to talk about some cards and then I'm going to price it out at the end so you guys can get a general idea as to how much the deck would cost to build that we showed case this week, which again was Sablezard. Now, before I start anything, keep in mind this video and this series is not designed for people to buy and collect cards to increase their profit as time goes on. This is from a aspect of a competitive player and if the deck that you're wanting to build is priced at a competitive point. So the first card that we're going to start with is Comfy. Now Comfy as a whole, it is about a dollar card, 85 cents to a dollar depending on what you want to do. Just keep in mind that with TCG player, there usually is only one copy available so you might have to buy from multiple stores. But be Comfy as a whole is priced very well, especially for the architect. It's a very solid card and it's the main part of how you get Lost Zone to work. So being priced at only around a dollar of card is not bad at all. If you're looking to pick some up, pick them up now. Market price 92 cents and even the reverse foil market price is 94 cents. Next card being Sableye. Now Sableye is a bit more just because it is a rare and it is a hollow. So you're not guaranteed one every pack. As you would be with Comfy, you can at least expect to get enough when you open up packs. Now looking at this, we do have the Hollow Foil selected, not the Reverse Hollow Foil. So with the Sableyes being since it is the main attacker in a deck, and it is a rare, you're looking to spend around $3.50, somewhere in that range if you're wanting to buy from higher end sellers. Or if you're wanting to buy from lower end sellers, as we can see right here, someone that has 4,000 sales, you're looking to spend $3.45. So overall, it's in around the $3.50 cent range between $3 and $4. Really good price. Next card being Kramer, again, another main attacker. One prize, you can swing for 110, and there's no backfire to it. Uh, looking at this, the cards are only around 35 cents. Keep in mind, there is shipping, so if you are trying to Save as much money as possible. Try to buy from the same shops. That way you only have to pay shipping once. Um, looking at this though, it's around 35 cents. Not bad at all. This deck as a whole, if you're looking to build at least the list that was ran on what to on Meta Monday, which I'll blow up right here again. This deck doesn't cost a lot, and I'll show you guys that at the end. Now, those three cards really are the main bread and butter when it comes to the Lost Box builds. The next card we're going to talk about is Charizard for those who want to build the Radiant Charizard version. This Radiant Charizard is about $6 cheaper than the other art. So they do the same thing. I would recommend buying this one. Now looking at this, you're looking to spend around $4 for the other art as compared to $10 for the Pokemon Go version. Now the next cards that we're going to talk about is if you're wanting to play Lost Box but you don't want to play the Sableye Charizard variant. You want to instead run cards like the Raikou V, Kyogre, Radiant Greninja, Mirage Gate builds. So the first card we're gonna start with is Raikou V. Now Raikou V has had a big, big price jump compared to the last few days. Um, about two weeks ago, it was in the $4 range. Now it's all the way up to almost $7. So if you're looking to pick up a copy, you can look to spend around $6.18, which isn't bad at all considering it's a main attacker and it does very well against things like Lugia and you can hit for 220 damage regardless of weakness, depending on if your opponent has a full bench as well as you. Very good card. If you're looking to pick up one to two copies, this $6 range isn't bad. Um, it does have a habit of price going up and down within the past few weeks as we see May 9th. It was up may 10th down and then may 11th up 12th up 13th and 14th down and then back up so about every other day it seems to be that the prices drop and then it goes back up so just keep an eye on the market and i would suggest waiting a few days to buy a couple copies 
But at the same time, with it only being around a $7 card, it's not going to break the bank. There's no way that this card's going to be over the $10 mark. I mean, looking at it, even in the six-month range, this is the highest that it's ever been. So with it being more playable, I would highly suggest buying them now, just because the prices aren't going to really go anywhere. This is probably where it's going to stay for a while, especially while Lugia is in the format. So if you're looking to pick up a couple copies, you're good to do it now. If you're wanting to wait a little bit, it could go down maybe 50 cents or so within the next couple days. Again, just keep an eye on the market. Next card being Kyogre. Pick up your play sets. It's only 15 cents for each card with a dollar shipping. So if you're wanting to buy from Diffuse TCG, for instance, you're really looking to spend a dollar and 60 cents for a playset. And none of them really run a playset of Kyogre. It's mainly one to two. But if you're wanting to have playsets just to keep yourself safe, you can choose to do so. The next Radiant that we're going to talk about is the Radiant Greninja. Now, Radiant Greninja is used in builds that don't run the Radiant Charizard. This card... It's not a bad price to buy at. When I purchased my Radiant Greninjas in the past, I had to spend around the $8 mark. I know people who have spent 5 so considering that this card is good for both draw acceleration as well as being able to snipe 90 and 90, spending about $4.50 on a copy is not bad at all. Now keep in mind when you are searching for things, they do tell you if it's Japanese or not, so make sure you're not buying. And finally, we'll talk about Mirage Gate. Now, Mirage Gate is an item. It's what powers the Lost Zone decks that do play alternate attackers. That way you can get energy out. Looking at this, 20 cents a copy will say you're looking to spend about $2 for shipping plus a playset. And the decks do run four. I would highly recommend getting these. And, you know, there's no reason not to. Considering that Mirage Gate is an important factor... I don't know if the prices will go up more, but considering that they are only 15 cents for a playable card, it is the best way to go about it. Now, the last thing that we're going to do is we are going to take a look at the Sablezard deck from this weekend and the Sablezard deck that we ran on Meta Monday. Now, looking at this, the deck total, I will blow up the list that we use so that way we have reference. But as you can see, for a deck that is good as well as hard to play, it's not expensive at all. You're looking to spend somewhere between $35 and $45. With the market right now, the medium price you're probably going to pay is closer to $40. But getting the play sets of things that you need, like Battle VIP Pass, which go in every deck, Escape Rope, which can be used, the Poke Gears, Nest Balls. You also have things like Colrus Experiment, which aren't just run in decks that revolve around the Lost Zone, Drapion V, which is a Mew counter. Looking at this, spending $40 for a competitive deck that you can do well with as long as you sit down and learn the sequencing is great. But overall, that is what I wanted to talk to you guys about today. The market really is good for Pokemon, so I would highly suggest buying cards that you feel comfortable buying. And also keep in mind that with more and more tournaments coming up as far as League Cups and stuff too, it's never a bad idea to have more cards in your, in your binder in order to pick what you want to play and considering that lost box as a good deck is forty dollars and if you're wanting to buy every single tech you're looking to spend maybe around sixty dollars so that way you can have every variant of lost box possible it's very good especially in a competitive standpoint but overall that's what i wanted to talk to you guys about thank you so much for watching today's what to buy wednesday and i'll catch you guys in the next video